I, every landscape painting I have just starts off light at the top, dark at the bottom. And it's just because I, because of the concept of the way that light filters down. You can think about the way that light filters through trees as well. I've always had it in the back of my mind to do a small body of work where it's light filtering through trees and just thinking about that in an abstract sense. I don't think I've even looked at that photograph. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Dark, dark, dark. Darker. Of course, what I'm painting now isn't isn't the sky, it's, it's the hills below the sky. I'm just gonna have the. I love playing with the idea that some places you can see distant hills and some places you can't. And I'm always disappointed when I come across the west coast and the visibility isn't good. You can't see the headland and the way it goes. Um, and it's not from the point of view that mm, my painting's all about describing the exact lay of the headland. It's just because if I need that reference, I'm gonna need to see something. Um, but I love just hiding it and then bringing it back in and hiding it. Uh, because all you need to suggest the headland is, is that mark there. And, and you've done it, it's done, you don't need anything else. So I think I've done more, shouldn't I? Just like that. Why is The next stages of this would have been had I had time to finish 120 centimetre canvas in two hours, and less than that for the cabin, uh, is the marks in the foreground. This mark is there for reference. That first mark, I made it the first mark that I did, and it's there for reference as to what I'm striving for in some of the painting. I don't want to start off with all those marks, I'm not always, sometimes I do actually. Um, there's a painting called Glen, uh, Three Sisters of Glencoe, uh, and it's on YouTube as well, you can watch it being painted. And it starts off with all the big chunky marks, and then the softness refines it all, and then it goes back to the chunky marks at the end. But the big marks that will underline the foreground will accentuate the softness of the sky. The sky isn't soft here, it's all very hard shapes, and it's all very uh, sort of bold and, and deliberate. Um, but when I get bolder and more deliberate with the foreground, you get a different perception of that. So you start to get that seesaw effect where you start adding something to the other side. That's it, I think. Let's finish up so I think we're tidy down and go. Thanks a lot, thanks for really being really good then. Hi, how's it going YouTube? My name is Scott Naismith and this is the final part of the Luskintyre live demonstration and we're now back at the studio uh, to complete the painting so uh, this will be the final part and you'll be able to see the final painting at the end. Uh, I'm always very grateful for any donations and especially recently from a very kind donation from an artist called uh, Stephanie Schlatter uh, and I'll, I'll leave a link to her, her pages 
uh, as really thanks for for that kind of donation. But uh, you know, the, I'm I'm constantly looking at ways to to update this channel with with something to help uh, artists out there from my experience and uh, and any knowledge that I might have. So um, it, I'm I'm really grateful for that. Thanks. Uh, you can follow on on Twitter, Facebook, and indeed subscribe to the channel, uh, and that means that you get some updates. Especially since uh, later on in the year there will be some news about uh, some uh, exhibiting in uh, America, uh, some prints uh, within the U.S. as well, and also a release of a book which should be happening later in the year. Uh, so please stay tuned to me for some of that information on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. Thanks a lot and I'll see you on the next video.